right, Chetty. Oh yeah, man. This is a way. This is a good way to start the week because listen, it's a, it's a, it's a week that we're listen back to back to reality, back to routine, back yeah. to school. Yeah, so, yeah. what the heck are we doing here? Well, this is uh, this is pretty neat because this is Adam uh, Beanstalk from uh, Adam Beanstalk uh, Natural Playgrounds, yeah. and this is the production facility. This is where yeah, everything yeah. gets done. This is where all the artists are, man. I mean, so Chad's an artist. Uh, his, his tool is a chainsaw, but uh, we have carvers. I have about a dozen carvers here. Chad's a master carver, and uh, so a lot of what we produce here that you'll see when we go to one of the playgrounds, yeah. this is where it all starts. Okay, let's see, what's, what's Chad working on here? So this is silver maple, uh, okay. and this would be you're about a, a... You're creating a little throne here, are you? It's, yes, it will be a throne. It's not there yet, but it's gonna be a beautiful carved uh, chair. Do you know where so, this wood came from? This is Hamilton wood. This, this is actually from about within 20 miles of here. So just around the corner. And we work with arborists all over the place, and that's where we get our wood from. This would have been chipped uh, or mulched. Right. And uh, that seems like a huge waste when you can turn it into art that people will sit on for the next generation. So. Why, why playgrounds, though? You know, when I grew up, I used to roam the, the creeks and the forests all around Dundas and Hamilton. And if you look at the roam rates of kids right now, they simply don't do it anymore. So if we don't do some of that stuff and make some of that happen, in the areas where they do play, on playgrounds, at schools, and child cares, then they don't get it at all. Yeah. It's a massive loss. So we're right across from the, the, the Souls of Gliding the Club gliding, here. The so they're, they're, they got gliders flying right every, oh, that's cool, uh, taking man. off. It's a perfect day for it. Yeah. So, so yeah, so we're trying to recreate, basically I'm trying to recreate my childhood for other kids that right. don't get to roam in the creeks anymore. Like going right through here and like going through the wood and feeling the wood. And it, all that touch is something they also don't get, right? There's automatically, I'm worried about your nice perfect clean shirt though, that one's not quite finished You can yet. give me a hack for wearing my white <laughs> shoes and my white colored shirt out to the production facility. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well it'll be right for the one we're yeah, going to so when we build, when you see the built we're one. We're going to next. So we, we were out and, and saw you uh, a couple years ago when you're doing kind of the outdoor classroom stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where's, so, where's, where's that at? Well, during the pandemic we started to make outdoor classrooms because that was, you know, what was happening. Where that is at now, we have literally thousands of outdoor classrooms that have been going out. So yeah. we, across the U.S., we're working on a big order in North Carolina right now and across Canada. We've been building outdoor classrooms and these are the teacher stations on the right. Right. These are the curriculum cabinets so they have everything that they need and their Wi-Fi and so on and a waterproof box right by it. And then this is all the classrooms and they go out 20, 30 yeah, at a time. This is the desk, right? Like you're kind of. You got the, it. That's what we did last yeah, time, the kid, right? The kids sitting here, like yeah. and that's. I would be sitting. I mean, for me, I'd be sitting on top yeah, of this one. On that's that. just uh, that's that's how I like the, right. the big perch. But so this this is actually continued on. We had ten. After we saw you, we had ten thousand requests for outdoor classrooms in the two and a half months that even, followed even, the last time. Even we saw in you. like Ontario, where it does get cold in the winter. Well, almost all of our first orders were in northern right. Ontario. That, oh, that, northern, yeah, they're so, top up there. So it was right across the top. They look at us like, what do you mean you're worried about the winter? Like, right. go outside. What's your problem? Yeah. Um, so. so it's cool because we want to actually see uh, a playground that you put together. And the timing's worked out perfectly. Uh, hey, Chad. Chad. Hey, Rob, can you stop? Chad, come second? on back and, uh, and finish something for us. We got Rob so, and Rob. Hey, guys. Yeah, and right cool. now What's in here, on? they're making raised planters. So these are raised planter boxes for young kids that, that we're looking at in there. But I was saying, so it's, it's the Labor Day Classic today. Yeah, you guys yeah. Bernie Morelli Rec Center. Bernie Morelli the Rec Center right across the street is a playground that you guys put together. So let's head down there and check yeah. that out and really see one of the one of the, the natural playgrounds in action. Oh, and it's literally right there. Like, it's okay. at Iverwind. Like, okay. it's at the old stadium. You want to take us to break here, Chad, with some of your artwork? Start her up, bud. Come on, let's do it. What exactly do you want me to do? do? Keep working away at it. Do whatever you want, What's man. your next where's, cut? Where's the Where's your next cut? Where's your chainsaw? You guys have time? I, I gotta move the log, probably. Just run it now. He's running now. Yeah, run her now. Get her, get her, get her going. We'll be back right, on Morning Live. And it's pretty quiet over there now, but this afternoon. That thing is going to be a rockin'. Good morning. Because we're across the street, Bernie Morelli, rec center. There's lots of activity happening here now. Because uh, last half hour, you saw us at the production facility of Bean and Stock Natural Playgrounds. Now we want to see one of their playgrounds in use. We got a slide here, buddy. You doing it? Can you do it? 
together. Ready? Let's do it. Come on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Lou. Well done. Back here with Adam. Hey, pal. How you doing? Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Um, so it's cool to see the production facility on where the stuff's getting made. But yeah, this yeah. is this is where this is what it's all about. This is what the uh, my guys love. This. I mean, while what you saw was awesome. Yeah. Putting it in and seeing the kids play on it. What's it all about? Right? Okay. So let's let's step everybody through the, like the natural playground and like what what is the concept that you guys are going for? Well, the idea here is to connect kids to nature, but most importantly, to be fully sensory in everything that they do. So this is really designed for and with kids. So if you look, they want to have their hands in, they want to affect change on the environment they're in. Not just some sort of flat plane with a thing that's plastic and steel in the middle, but all of these kids everywhere around here are fully engaged because they're, they're doing it. We're just giving them a framework. So what were we doing wrong for so long when it came to playgrounds? Well, you know what? Playgrounds served a really important purpose the way they were built because we had access to all of this beyond our backyards. When we roamed freely and went and did all that, that's what stopped. So now all of that stuff that you got when you're playing in the woods, we got to get that to happen in the playgrounds. So it forces us to think different. Okay, what about like this one specifically at Bernie Morelli? So it's been here for a couple this of years? This is a couple of years now. Uh, this was just a flat piece of asphalt or concrete when we started and they wanted to have something for big muscle play that they could climb on. They wanted to have something that they could do dramatic play and actually create theater. They wanted something for the smaller kids to actually manipulate and play in the sand just like you would have on the beach or in the edge of the creek right. when you were a kid. And they wanted to have a slide. So in the winter, the slide's cool because now it's a tobogganing hill for these kids. It's because we're, we work in Four Seasons. So this is, we're Canada, man. This, this is Four Seasons. So this is, is each and every one that you're making here in Hamilton, being yeah. a local company, but yeah. even across North America, every one is different? Every single time it's different. Some kind of different configuration because we're trying to give them what's missing from their place that they've already got. And when you get there, some places have great big trees. So we're like, okay, we got to do something with these great big trees to make them even more fun. Yeah. So what do we do? Like in other places like this, they didn't have any. So we need to get a forest in. How do we get that forest in on a piece of concrete? So we're always talking to them. Let's let's take a break and then kind of break down the different sensory yeah, yeah. areas and get more specific and what it's doing for kids because it's great to have so many kids here, kids of all different ages, and yeah, yeah. they're they're dealing with each area probably differently. And did you notice there's no yelling and screaming? Like these it, kids are happy. Nice. These are like calm <laughs> kids. If you all give them enough, they actually don't. The bullying rates all drop. Okay, so we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get into more of that. Yeah. Uh, Beanstalk Natural Playgrounds yeah. Morning Life. Good morning, this is little Max, one years old. Morning, Max. Hey, Hi, Max. buddy. And dad, dad's name is? Andrew. Andrew, hey, Andrew. supporting the cast today, the Labor Day Classic. Good to be right across the street, actually, I from know. Tim Hortons Field. That's really cool. It's right there. Uh, Bernie Morelli Rec Center, hanging with uh, Adam from Adam Beanstalk, Beanstalk Natural Playgrounds. And, and this whole concept of sensory play for little Max, who's one, yep. goes up to what age? Well, there really isn't a limit, but you know, generally the sweet spot is between Max and 12. You talk to a 14-year-old, let's go meet at the playground, they look at you like you got three heads. <laughs> Who are we kidding? <laughs> so for little Max, yeah. what, what would this area do for him? So or what did you just set up in this area? So with Andrew right now, he's like moving up, up and down these loose parts that were added to this by the, by the, the facility here. But as he gets older, he'll start to swing on this. That's called vestibular motion. Right. Super important for What's your kids name? in balance and agility. Hey, Sam. So, so how old are you, Sam? So Sam is eight. So Max won't do this for years, but Max will be on this and then he'll progress to being able to walk across like that. And that's a big deal for little Max to get to the point where this guy is. So you gotta give things that allow them to interpret in a different way. Each kid interprets in a different way. You get way bigger engagement rates, they stay way longer and they manipulate their own environment now. What it being like natural, like this wood, why, why is that so important for you guys? So my dad, believe it or not, he was known as the uh, father of mucosal immunology, was the, the head guy at Mac for years, uh, was the dean of health sciences. As an immunologist, what I, what I grew up learning was we need to touch and feel this stuff. We need to get the bacteria from this into our system because that's the basis of our immune system. If you don't do that by the time you're nine, your immune system is messed up. So we want all those natural things in there. The other part is these kids actually stop injuring themselves the same way. We are 30 to 40 times less likely to injure yourself in this playground than in a standard plastic and steel one. 
That's what all the data coming back is right now. And the reason is that they're engaged with their senses, so their brains are in, so that they're less likely to hurt themselves. And where are we getting it? Where are we getting all, all of this from? is recycled. So this stuff would have been chipped. This would have been firewood. And uh, we work with arborists all over Ontario, all over North America to find this wood. Is there certain wood better than others? Absolutely. There's, yeah. there's uh, you know, Robinia red oak. This one's a, a, a red oak here. So there are certain species that we accept, others that just sort of dissipate yeah. too quickly. To, so they do become the chips. Oh, there's Jill. Hey, Jill. Morning, Jill. There's Director of Education with, let's get into that a little bit, kind of the education side Absolutely. With, with, within the company and, and, and what you guys are doing there and, and helping uh, mold. So, turns out that math scores, science scores all improve when they have an hour and a half outside in a natural environment as well. Okay. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back more about that and the bullying stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we started with Max. We're finishing with Max. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Look at that face. Who's this little guy? That's Max. Hi, Max. We got another Max. Hi, Max. Hi, Hi buddy. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back to Bernie Morelli Rec Center, and we're here because Adam Beanstalk is, uh, and his natural playgrounds have created this space. Um, all different sensory overload for little guys and yeah, I mean, bigger actually, guys. Sensory underload girls. just about everywhere else. This yeah. is normal for kids this age. This is what we're hardwired for. So we don't get enough sensory engagement in most kids. So this is what they need all day, every day. Are we... Are we too safe with our kids? Way too safe with our kids. The data on it shows that the more we prevent them from doing it, the more likely they are to hurt themselves in a serious way That's later. That's okay, though, because then want, they learn from it. But I don't want them to figure I want them to figure it now when their their bones don't break, they just bend a little. I don't want, like, when they're drinking in 18 isn't the time to figure out whether or not, yeah. you know, they can take that risk. This area here is kind of described as? Creative, dramatic play. So this is where there's always a fort, there's a little bit of shade, they adapt this with straps and ropes. They use the hill differently in the winter. Uh, so this is where you'll find kids who don't, uh, it's just a bit too much with all of them in the full on do you see sensory. That with, do you see that with kids? Where well, like, kids do kind of flock to certain areas? Every kid's wired different. Right. right? I was wired totally different. And for how, me, were, how were you wired? I was like, I would have been on the slide the whole time. But in this particular group, there's no one really interested in yeah. that. This is what they want to actually play on, so. Uh, what about the bullying aspect? The, we, our data is pretty straightforward. The bullying rates on the playgrounds where we've gone in, before we get there to after, there's an 87 to 92 percent drop in bullying as soon as we build this. Because is it them working together? Well, there's more than that. There's a place of mastery for every kid. You think about the playground that's just a flat plane and a thing on the top. Well, that's perfect for King of the Castle. It's not so good for kids who actually just want to pick something up and sit in the corner or sit by themselves, there's no place for them. They're like running the gauntlet the whole time. This has a place of mastery for every kind of kid. So if they wanna be just fully sensory and doing sand, they can do that. If they wanna be climbing the hill and going down the slide, they can do that. Every kid's different. How much do you have to educate, I don't know, teachers oh. and staff about that play? Every time we do this, we spend time doing that. You don't have to educate the kids at all. They get this. They get this right away. They're, you don't have to. You can just open the doors and they're in there. And within the, the first nine minutes, they've all found their favorite spot yeah. and they're doing their thing and the bullying rates are gone. The, the, we have to tell the parents and the teachers just to let them do it. Okay. So this is one in Hamilton. You guys yeah. are a local company. This yeah, is cool. Yeah. This, this in Hamilton. But you're doing this all across North America? We do all across North America. We've done Australia, New Zealand, Amazing. Indonesia. Like, you know, we, we, we work all over the world. Um, right now, we've got our biggest projects down in Illinois. So Amazing. I spend a lot of time. I head out there again on Monday. Cool. Yeah. Um, Good to see you. Nice cool. to see this you This is again. actually pretty cool because look at the, like, the stadium's right there. And it's Monday. It's Labor Day. Oh, look who's here. Hello. Mr. Tyke out of South, Pete Dykowski. How are you? I'm doing Good great. You're just not hanging out at the park by yourself, are you? No, this is one of our local parks. Awesome. And the girls are right now making ice cream. Which one are your girls? Can we show? That's Louise. Louise, what are you making? Louise, Louise. Ice cream. Ice cream. There's Louise. And where's your other one? Helen is somewhere. So I, don't, I don't even know where she is. <laughs> uh, well, good parenting. Good yeah. parenting, Pete. Oh, there she is. Say hi. Hello. OK, we, we need a prediction, OK? How, okay. how important is this for I, the cat? I predict it's going to taste really grainy because the main ingredients are sand For the chalk. game, Pete. Oh, the, for the game. Oh, the cat's asking you. <laughs> it's going to be a big win. You got the Argos coming in overconfident, but it's a Labor Day in yeah. Hamilton. It's going to be a madhouse okay. right over there. Yeah. And we're going to destroy him. Okay. Big, big time win. Big Back time win. Track. OK, uh, slide. Me and you. Let's go. Come yeah, on. Go. Come on. Celebrate the cat's win. Being stock. Natural playgrounds. Always like to play with this guy. <laughs> Are you gonna get down? 
Is this one of yours? Is this one of yours? Hold on. We're going down. Look out. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>